All right, so these questions today are very important. They're kind of like the most difficult, but also the core questions of chapter two, and you have a chapter two test next week. These will also provide you the guidance you need to do your homework. I would suggest you do these over and over, pausing when you need to understand more clearly and rewinding if you have to, to make sure you do these questions right. Do them on your own page with these, waiting on pause, see how far you get, and if you get stuck, then you go and you hit pause and play this thing, roll it through, correct your answers, and then hit pause again and try it on your own. Go back and see if you got it right. If you didn't, then rewind it and play it again to see what I did and copy what I do exactly the way I do it. So the first question, 5.5D minus 1.2A plus 3D plus 4.2A, what do you do? Remember I gave you the example about organizing your, you know, your socks go with your socks and your shirts go with your shirts. Remember that example? Yes, Jonathan. Uh, you circle and like pair them up. Pair them up, right. The same, uh, if I put a check by 5.5D, which other one is like five? Which is like got a D in it? 3D. There you go, 3D. The so those two are going to go together, and guess what? This is the important step that a lot of you missed. You need to rewrite this. How am I going to rewrite it? 5.5D. 5 5 right. 3D. Right, and some of you like to make sh to do shortcuts, and that's not going to work. You've got to rewrite this. I want to see you rewriting this. And even if you get the right answer, but you do it as a shortcut, I won't be happy. I want this step. Okay. Then right here, let's put a circle around that one and a circle around this one. Why are those? Why do those have circles, Simon? Why is that similar to that? What do they both have? They both have a. So then I go 1.2 a negative and plus 4.2 a. Everybody clear about that? That's what I mean. You're organizing your room. You know what I'm saying? These are your socks. You put them in your sock drawer. These are your t-shirts. You put them in your t-shirt drawer. It's a metaphor. Okay. If you like metaphors, there you go. If you don't, don't worry about it. These are D's. Those are A's. Now, um, what's 5.5 5 plus 3? 8.5. Uh, right. If I want, I can do this. I can go like this. 5.5 5 plus 3D. And that's equal to, or I can do it like this. And that's 8.5D right there. And over here, now somebody had problems with the negative. If you want to do it on the side, you can. It's 4.2 minus 1.2 is equal to 3.0. So we've got plus 3.0a, and we're done. Okay? And I guess I wouldn't put the point O. There you go. Okay? Any questions? Good. Let's move on to two. Fractions are not a problem. Get used to saying that. I like fractions. Say, I like fractions. I like fractions. I love fractions. There you go. Like That's turtles. a good positive attitude. We don't have a problem with fractions. I don't have a problem with fractions. Do you? Okay, one fifth x. Same thing. Which ones go together? Remember, lions run in the jungle with lions, and dolphins swim in the ocean with dolphins. They don't mix. Neither do x's and y's. So let's separate them. Let's put the x's with the x's. Austin. One fifth x plus two fifths x. Good. And then four fifths y minus one fifth y. Right. And I'm going to do that in red, just so you know that they're different. They don't mix. They're separate. They live in different kingdoms. Here we go. Uh, what's one fifth plus two fifths? Natalia. One fifth plus two fifths. The denominators are the same, right? So you get what? Three fifths. Three fifths x. Good. What's four fifths minus one fifth? Three fifths. Right. Plus three fifths y. And I'm not going to get too much into the fact that, you know, when the denominators are the same, you can subtract the numerators, the tops. So that's how it works. Everybody have any questions with that? We are not afraid of fractions. We are not afraid of decimals. We love fractions and we love decimals. Right? Now, what about factoring? We love factoring. How do we factor? What do we got? Jonathan, what's the common factor between 8, 10, and 22? Two. Two, good. So what do we do with that two? Now here's the key. We write it. We write it where? Uh, down. Down here. We put parentheses. So yes, we do. Now how do we know what to put in parentheses? Uh, we divide two by eight. That's, That's true. Four. What about there? Uh, same. Same and thing. Same. There you go. That's the method. Write it down exactly that way. And if you find yourself getting stuck on any of the homework this weekend that has to do with factoring, then go back and look at this problem. Pause it and make sure that you do it this way. I want you to do these methods because it works and because these will form the basis for more difficult stuff later in the year. Do the factoring this way. Don't deviate from the path. Not at this stage. 
All right, so what's 8x divided by 2? Pepper? Hello. 8x divided by 2. 2 is 4x. Good. Keep going. It is plus 5y. Good. Minus 11. Thank you. Are we done? Box it. There you go. I'm going to make a curly box because it's Friday. All right, so two <laughs> times that, and there it goes. Now, um, again, if you choose your, t you know, if you choose this properly, you won't have to keep factoring it. If you don't get the biggest number out, the greatest common factor, then you're going to have to keep factoring this. Pick your number carefully. Two is the biggest number that will go into all of those. Four will work into eight, but it won't go into ten. Six won't go into any of them. Eleven goes into twenty-two, won't go into ten. You know what I'm saying? Pick your common factor, your greatest common factor, carefully, and then you will succeed. 